Hello, today we'll look at the connection between potassium and acid-base disturbances. What type of acid-base disturbances do we have? We have alkalosis or acidosis. Alkalosis means that we have a pH that is higher than let's say 7.4 depending on the lab because we can have 7.35 to 7.45 being in the normal neutral pH. Everything above 7.45 is alkalosis. Everything below 7.35 is then acidosis. Acidosis means that we have a high concentration of protons. These are H+. These are ions that increase the acidity of something, of blood in, in, in the body. So, if we have now two cases, alkalosis and acidosis, we can divide them into further two cases. We have metabolic alkalosis or respiratory alkalosis or we have metabolic acidosis or respiratory acidosis. So as you see, we have alkalosis, acidosis and we have metabolic or respiratory. And potassium is usually affected by metabolic ones, not so much by respiratory ones. That, mean, that means that we will focus on metabolic alkalosis and metabolic acidosis. The difference is only that respiratory acidosis and respiratory alkalosis are, are related some, somehow to the lungs. Metabolic ones are related somehow to the chemicals in your body. So if we take now the potassium as an example, potassium can be changed by either uh, alkalosis or acidosis. So if we have a cell, a quadratic cell, 98% of, per of potassium will be inside the cell. Only 2% will be outside the cell. Okay, now we have outside the, of the cell is blood, for example. So we have a cell and then we have blood flowing next to the cell. And in the blood now, we will have an example of acidosis. So we have a high amount of protons, high amount of hydrogen ions. Okay, so hi hi hydrogen is then positively charged. And the body hates when there is a difference between two spaces. For example, in the cell, the, there is not, not acids in the cell so much. There are protons, there are hydrogen ions, but it's not so acidic as in the blood. And therefore, if it's more acidic in the blood, that will tend to move then into the cell to compensate it. But it hates when it's too, too large difference between the spaces. So if there's a high amount of acids, high amount of hydrogen ions in the blood, the hydrogen ions will now move into the cell and the cell have now two decisions to make. Either he can kick out the, these hydrogen ions because he don't want to become too positively charged because the hydrogen ions have a positive charge. And if you have too much positively charged in the cell, then that's not good either. Because as we said, the body hates when there's too high a difference between the spaces. And now the, the cell starts to build up too much positivity. And therefore the cell needs to kick out hydrogen or some other ion. The problem is that the cell cannot kick out these hydrogen ions because the because the blood is so acidic, there's so high concentration outside that the cell needs to find another solution. And another solution is to remove, to kick out potassium instead. Potassium will move now from the cell into the blood, thereby the cell positivity will now be reduced to the normal again. And the good thing is that potassium will not affect the blood pH. So the problem is solved. The pH in the blood was very low, so that it was too high concentration of hydrogen ions. We solved it by moving it into the cell. Now it's balanced. And we solved the positivity in the cell by removing potassium out of the cell into the blood. That means that now that I take a blood sample from the patient, I will see a lot of 
potassium in the blood. That will be hyperkalemia, this high amount of potassium in the blood. Hyper stands for high, kalemia is potassium in the blood. And that means that we have a connection here. We have a connection between acidosis, which means high amount of protons or hydrogen ions, and hyperkalemia. So when you, whenever you see acidosis in a patient, then you can expect, expect to get hyperkalemia, which is a high amount of potassium in the blood. And the opposite is true also. If you have alkalosis, so a low amount of hydrogen ion in the blood, then you can expect to have hypokalemia, which means that most of the potassium is in the cell. It remains in the cell. Why? Because if we have a low amount of hydrogen in the blood, then instead of the hydrogen moving in, into the cell, there's no need to do that because there's so few of them in the blood. Instead, actually, the, the hydrogen ions from the cell will move out to their blood instead to compensate it because the concentration in the cell is higher now than, the, than in the blood. And that means that now it will be the opposite. The cell will become more and more negative because the hydrogen ions move out from the cell. And since the cell becomes more negative, then the cell needs to compensate this negativity by reabsorbing, so taking in something. And again, it will take in potassium from the blood. And thereby, it will be a hypokalemia. It will be a low amount of potassium in the blood. So it's the opposite. So to conclude, acidosis means hyperkalemia. Alkalosis means hypokalemia. This is the connection. And of course, there are exceptions. The body is more complex than this. This is called internal potassium balance because it's internal uh, relating to the cell and the blood. But when we have external losses, for example, diarrhea, if you have a lot of diarrhea, and then we, we know that in diarrhea, you have a lot of alkalic material, so ions, and if you remove a lot of alkalic material, then the body will be acidotic, so it will be acidic. And this means that we would expect to have now ac acidic blood, and then we would expect hyperkalemia, as we said here, but not in this case. When we're dealing with diarrhea, we have a, lost, uh, a loss of potassium also in the stool. And that means that we will see an acidosis with hypokalemia, and this is an exception. And, uh, and, and another thing is that, for example, we have insulin. If you have increased insulin, insulin will then tend to move potassium into the cells. So regardless if you have alkalosis or acidosis in your blood, if you have a huge amount of insulin, that will move this potassium into the cell and then you will get hypokalemia. And the opposite is true also. If you have a very low amount of insulin, then the potassium will move out from the cell. For four other cases, let's see. We have vomiting. If you vomit, then you lose a lot of gastric acid. And as you hear in the name, it's acid. So if you lose a lot of acid from, the vom from, uh, from your stomach, then the body becomes alkalotic, so alkalosis, the pH goes up. And we know that if the pH goes up, then the kidneys would tend to remove more potassium. So by vomiting, you get alkalosis, and by alkalosis, you get an excretion of potassium from the kidneys, and thereby you get hypokalemia. And this is good. This is as we learned. Hyp uh, alkalosis, it means hypokalemia. Okay? Another thing, if you have diuretic use, that is also increasing the excretion by the kidneys, excretion of the potassium by the kidneys. But as you see, this is not related to this internal potassium balance, it's related to some external th thing. It's related to the kidneys. Uh, another thing, syndromes. We have, for example, Barter syndrome or Gittelman syndrome. In these cases, we're also dealing with alkalosis and thereby increased ex excretion uh, of potassium by the kidneys. So, just to conclude now, as a general thing, when you have acidosis, 
then you will always have hyperkalemia. When you have alkalosis, then you will have hypokalemia. And the exceptions were insulin, increased insulin, then hypokalemia. Then we have diarrhea, then you also have hypokalemia, but together with acidosis instead of alkalosis. And then we had these four examples. We had then metabolic alkalosis, that was when we had vomiting, which increased the excretion of potassium in the kidney, diuretic use also, Barter syndrome and Gittelman syndrome. So that's the relationship between potassium and acid-base disturbances. Well, thank you very much for listening.